And welcome to Metaphysical Part 2 of our Pyramid Episodes. What weird and mysterious things are associated with pyramids? Why is this structure repeated all around the planet? And what has remote viewing data uncovered about what may have been really happening in the past? We know pyramids are located around the world. Chichen Itza, the Pyramid of the Sun, the Great Pyramid of Cholula, and the Great Pyramid of Giza fascinates us all. And us too. So join remote viewer John Vivanco and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts, for a show that's out of this world. Yeah. John, how you doing, man? Good. Wow. First episode was so interesting, talking about what functions the pyramids, what mysteries the pyramids hold, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, they're amazing. Have you seen um, the really old, I guess, turn of the century, 1900s photos of Chichen Itza? So it's like compared from then to now, then it was completely covered with dirt. Yes. And plants all over it. Right. I mean, think about how, what happened? Was that just, I mean, or how long it took to cover that thing up with dirt? Look at that. Wow. I mean. So it's been, so you're, I mean, really this could be happening anywhere on the planet. We don't right. even know what's hidden underneath the ground. Right. Exactly. I think, I think these things are probably in loads of different areas that we just don't even recognize. Wow. I think that, that, you know, when you think about earth cataclysm and how the earth can change and floods and volcanic activity, these things, these things will be covered up. I mean, that's really one of the main contention points, you know, with, with uh, like Graham Hancock, for instance, um, and um, uh, Carlson, Randall Carlson, where you know, a lot of people ask, well, if there were ancient civilizations beyond us, then where's the evidence? We would have broken shards of pottery, et cetera, et cetera. But, but the, the deal that this planet goes through uh, you know, on these big cataclysms that, that can be mapped through ice cores uh, <laughs> literally are catastrophic changes that happen in an extremely sh short period of time right? Where, where everything is obliterated and covered up. But some things aren't. And those things that aren't, I think, are pyramids and out of place parts and stuff like that. They still exist. People find them every once in a while. But for the most part, these things get wiped out, stuck on the bottom of the ocean or or just or, covered up in dirt or, or snow, ice or, or Antarctica. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, we don't yeah. even know really what's on what's in there. I mean, it's all covered. And, you know, right. I mean, from my understanding, well, yeah, I mean, jungle, that, right. Like it was jungle. Right. That continent was, was when it started to break off from uh, what they call Pangea is when it started to freeze. That place has been frozen for a very long time. So anything there before that happened would be in an absolute deep freeze and probably well-preserved. Mm. And that's probably why it's off limits to the regular person. And Lindsay, can you pull up a photo of Chichen Itza? Let's let's talk about this first. I mean, this this pyramid is fascinating for a bunch of different reasons. Um, I mean, to me, just looking at the structure of this thing, it really seems to me that it is some type of place to conduct rituals at the top. Yeah, of some sort for good or for bad. Um, and there it's, it's not that hard to get up there. I mean, you've got the steps leading up. So, um, what, you know, the, the thing that kind of makes this unique is I've seen different images of pyramids and pyramid shapes, and some of the pyramids are flat at the top, right. very similar to this one. And then there is this extra element that gets put at the top to finish it um, where the eye would exist or in, in another case, a capstone would exist. Right. 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 So yeah, what, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. What it, I mean, what is this thing? <clears throat> what, what is that thing? What yeah, is I've never viewed thing? that, never viewed that pyramid. Really? Um, 
I think, I mean, my gut just tells me there's a, there, this ritual, ritual purposes, power and ritual. I mean, what's inside this thing too? Is there anything inside of it? Does it have entrances? That's a great question on Chichen Itza. Um, I, I don't know I much about it. I can't remember if, personally, I can't remember if Chichen Itza had a bunch of um, tunnels and stuff in there. But well, it would have to. That's where they kept their their sacrifices, right? Maybe that's somewhat what utilized. Well, you know, I mean, what is this? Was this a place where they did sacrifices? So I, I do, I think that eventually it was. But eventually. there were other pyramids that were used. That's kind of what I mean, though. Is like I think that when the Spanish came in over in this area, they were they were kind of wiping out different nefarious i mean there's different understandings of this but i mean anyone who's sacrificing human beings not not great you know right um well i mean it it, it i mean it could have been okay so we had we had remote viewed um we've like remote viewed mars extensively for instance right um extensively and and that planet I mean, even CIA declassified documents, they had remote viewers going to Mars. And in the in the data that we have, it used to be a lush planet. It used to be populated. Used Mars. To have oceans. Yeah, Mars. Right. And um, they had pyramid structures that they had built there for various purposes. And we saw that when, when we remote viewed this culture, some of these structures were for sacrifices. They were for sacrifices. So, so one of the things that we saw with the destruction of Mars, Mars, Mars was um, the atmosphere was ripped off. Um, there was a huge conflagration in earlier times in our solar system that we've seen with remote viewing, and and some of the beings, people who lived there, they were short statured and red in color. They were actually moved to this planet and and you know data suggests that potentially they were the precursors of the mayans of the um mm. of the races in central south america um so you know as far as and, we've and, seen i mean who, who knows they could have brought sacrifice with them yeah well and chitsa is is mayan and you know right mayans were very knowledgeable about uh, astronomy and things, but then also there was this sacrificing that was going on at the time, at least what we can tell. Right. Right. So, so I, I mean, yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, if you watch, you've probably seen that movie Apocalypto. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the reason why I referenced this film isn't because that's exactly what happened, but more just the, the horrific, like, right the horrific side of how these sacrifices were and like the heads just bouncing down the stairs and the blood that was running down them. Very, very crazy yeah. story. Um, you know, and, and, and behind, you know, if you look at the, we're showing a poster right now of, of Apocalypto and these pyramids look nearly identical to the pyramid in, in Chichen Itza where right. these sacrifices were taking place. Well, what's interesting too is that these pyramids are are different than the ones we find um, in Egypt and those those areas, the surrounding are. areas, right? They're they're still pyramids, but they are different. Now, why is that? You know, I think probably because they didn't use these necessarily for um, power generation and those types of things, and more they were using them for ritual purposes. Right. Um, because they may not, I think you have to have the construction of that point at the top in order to really generate the power that's, that's useful in, in building civilization. Mm. I don't know if it's going to have the same effect with that flat cut off top. Mm. Yeah. And, and gosh, and, and I think, you know, smooth sides are probably needed too. Um, yeah. At least in the article we were looking at last time, like on the well, atomic level. Right. And then and the other thing, too, is that how are these pyramids positioned? Were they positioned with the edge um, uh, towards Facing the north? Yeah, right. 
I mean, I think that would be an indicator and I'm sure, you know, people do know, um, I'm sure they do know. I've just never researched it. That would be an indicator also of, of power, whether, whether they were using these things for power generation, because that yeah. power definitely increases. Like I notice, you know, with, with pyramids that I've played with, Mm. meditating in them, big ones, small ones, that if you don't have it aligned, you get this sort of like, uh, this like, it's like a car trying to start feeling inside mm. the pyramid when it's off from that alignment. That's weird because um, the the Great Pyramid of Giza faces the four cardinal directions too. Like they did it on purpose. Right. They must have. They did it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that complex is very, very specific. Very specific. So I think that that pyramids are used for different reasons in different cultures, but it's still that shape, mm. it's still that shape. And then you find it on Mars, right? And then we found it on other planets that we have remote viewed throughout the universe. We find it where, wherever mammals are, pyramids are. That's what they build. That's what they, that's what they know. So it's, a, it's interesting. It's almost like this natural shape that's in being subconscious to build and, and, and create around, like it's that essential. It's, you know, well, I mean, is it in the subconscious or is this something that's passed down by those who see the planets, you know, I mean, this, this, this long line of information being well, passed it, you down. Know, I, it's certainly in people's subconscious now because even and and for different yeah. reasons, because even, even when, no one really understands what it means. People will just graffiti pyramids w on the side of a wall or pyramids with eyes on the side of a wall. I used to walk through Manhattan all the time and look around and just be like, do these people even know what they're, right. what they're spray painting? Like that, it's bizarre. Yeah, and it's it everywhere strange. all the time. I mean, you'll even see people doing weird things like in Manhattan, especially where they're communicating with someone. Like they'll be certain symbols I, I would find. I even started taking pictures of them all across Manhattan on the sidewalks of some weird pyramid thing that people were, were drawing on the ground, right? And this here's the global elite that's <laughs> with the eye in the middle. Yeah, You know, a lot of people do associate the pyramid with the eye in the middle to the elite because it's on the dollar and it's in so many different places as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's strange. Like it is in people's subconscious, like all these music videos on MTV or wherever on YouTube, uh, K-pop or, or just like the big time stars are, always have very deep symbolism in them. A lot of times with pyramids in there, you'll see the pyramids in Super Bowl shows. And it's like, yes, I do think that some of these creative directors are putting these things in on purpose, but then there's also the element of, people now have them in their subconscious and they're like constantly putting them places, you know? Right. 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 I mean, you know, like I said, I think that this could all go back to God having a pyramid head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's weird though. Right. Like look at why? that. This, this is a K-pop. Um, yeah. We're showing a picture of a K-pop concert. And in the back, there's a pyramid with a reptilian eye in the middle. Wow! Like exactly. You know, I mean, and I slit, slit it but, off. You know, if they're if they're in the the conspiracy side of pop culture, it's like when I don't know. It's like they are they pushed to do that? Are they said? You know, are does their manager get word from high up to 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 throw this symbolism out? Or you know, what's the deal behind it? Or do they go, you know, this is cool? Or are the guys into? you know, weird conspiracy theories and they're, well, you know, doing it that way and they want to be popular by, hey, I'm in the Illuminati kind of thing. I think that's always absolutely ridiculous when people say that, but, you know, I, I agree. They like to play that game, right? For popularity's sake. These musicians are often come in, they, they have to sign a specific contract and do specific things in order to, in order to get their deal. Once they've done that, it's sort of like in their contract are these things that they just have to do. There's certain songs that they have to write with specific information in the songs, right? And like, they're not going in being like, yeah, I want my, my music video to be like this. Like that right. never happens. It's like some dude at some level above their pay grade is stand here, do this. 
they put it all together and then it just gets out there and we're I all see. looking at it. So there's there's multiple compartmentalized levels going up to some like a pyramid shape, like somebody at the top that's making some of these decisions, right? Right. And um and so it it really is like, okay, like these K-pop guys, right? Like if you even start to talk about some of the things that are in these K-pop videos, you like you go on to YouTube and you write a couple of comments, you will just get wiped out by their fan base. These like wow. ravenously like crazy fans right. that like, oh no, they're the sweetest people on earth and all of this stuff. And it's like, okay, um, this is in their video. They don't care. It's like, we even started touching on it a little bit in our YouTube days. And you'd get droves of these people like coming in just to kind of like almost like bots or something. Right. But they could have just been like, you know, foaming at the mouth fans that's just right. telling everyone about it. Go attack them because they said something negative about, you know, K-pop or this right. specific group. I can't even remember their names anymore. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just just sort of MK Ultra well, mass. And yeah, like you, you can't expect really somebody like, I don't know, I'll give you an example, like Britney Spears or anyone, right? To really understand all of this symbolism and the stuff that goes right. into it. It's a really- It doesn't seem that way, exactly. Right. right. With you, a small you amount of people with an understanding at a very high level of this entire thing that right. are all somehow doing it. Like the creative agencies, you know, like the- um, the guy, Like what's in the songs, what you what they write about, and then the- the creative that goes into them, it's a very bizarre connection between all of them at the very top. And and like even then you even have guys like Jay-Z coming out talking about the Illuminati and 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 like different things. And they love that, I think, because they love that. Yeah, because yeah. it gives it's actually like a complete distraction from what may be going on. You know what I mean? Right. Like, Exactly. That's what I think. I think it's just a distraction. I mean, and, you know, the, the, the whole idea of the Illuminati comes from what Adam Weishaupt in the 17- 17... Adam Weishaupt, the Bavarian Illuminati, yeah. Right, the Bavarian Illuminati. And that was, you know, a banker, sp really specifically what a banker controlled little uh, club, right? But I don't, I don't, like when they, when they do this, when they flash the pyramid symbol and the Egyptian symbols, the eye and whatnot, and cover one eye, yeah, it's like it's like obviously somebody, like you just said, is telling them to do this. Yeah, like it's in their contract to throw this stuff out to take. I've I have to say what this person tells me to say at these specific periods of time, points in time, and for what purpose? <clears throat> for what purpose is that? I don't quite get that. Is oh. it for some future event where we have another? sky stone thing flying in to, to harvest people or i don't know what the heck's it for i think that it's um i really think that when we when we get into this part of the conversation we're talking about a form of technology that people don't understand or that they've forgotten and that a yeah. very small amount of people like it's a very low level usage of some type of magic that has or generate some type of effect that right. they want, that they like. Right. And so showing things, showing those things, it's an exercise of power and control. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And, and so I do, do they have energy? I mean, yeah, like you can find witches that do strange things to generate an outcome because they're kind of hijacking some loophole in the in the creation to generate some type of outcome right, using exactly. <clears throat> some type of process right? right 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 so you know if if it is secret if these secret societies do exist and they are sharing this information it does make sense that 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 it's a it's like a it's a group at the top that's all laughing at one like to one another about the things that they're putting in all of that stuff and we're just watching and drooling and not really knowing what's going on right so you've got that part of it but then also like the outcomes that they're trying to achieve i mean some of the data we were looking at were saying that that records had the most amount of witchcraft being put on to the albums to get people to like 
when we start talking about the Beatles and stuff, we found really strange stuff where it's like they're really like it, and it does. It goes directly back to the science and the and the power of like of the pyramid is a perfect example. It's like the pyramid is a very powerful structure that really actually generates different types of outcomes when you use it properly. So why wouldn't a group who wants to control things use the, the, the universes or the world's most powerful shape according to, right. You know, their understanding, right. They, they would, they would try to hijack that completely because it does right. things, right. It, it communicates things, you know, right. and, and this is what it's all about. I think. Yeah. 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 I think you're probably right about that. I mean, I, I don't know, tangent time. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like this, this rabbit hole goes so deep. It does. And, uh, you know, the weird thing with this kind of stuff is that when we start to remote view um, things like um, not not so much like like the origination of the pyramid in the eye, that's like this source that like that, according to our data and remote viewing experiences with it, it is something that that is from source energy. Mm -hmm feeling of source. But when we remote view human renditions of it, it gets different, it gets dark. It feels dark and mm. viewers usually cut off from it because there's a negative dark energy behind it. The, so, what's the name of this? So Lindsay just pulled up an image of, of a pyramid. What is the name of this? What is it? This is the pyramid of the sun. Isn't this the largest pyramid in the world or something? No. Okay. Cholula is the largest pyramid in the world, but this one right here, like, I'm not sure if you can see this, John, but like, do you notice how each layer, it almost looks like the grain is going in a different direction? Oh yeah, right. Really fascinating. That. Yeah. This yeah, one definitely feels alien to me. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you looked into this one at all, the, the pyramid? No, you know, we haven't. So we have not looked into the actual pyramid structures unless we wanted to know how they were constructed. So we've dug a lot into the construction of, um, well, megalithic structures uh, across uh, Central South oh, America, right. as well as the pyramids, great pyramids in Egypt. Um, and and we, we usually go that route. We never really like went into the, uh, you know, what like it's a, it's a simple tasking actually, and I don't know why I've never tasked it, but this would be literally describe why they created this. What was the main purpose for it? Part, part four, or part, actually <laughs> part, part three. Part four. Well, you know, Chinese pyramids too. That's crazy. Those We're going to have like to a list of stuff to task out on that. Right. Figure right. out how well, to get You know, it. when we get to the Egyptians, we get to the Egyptian pyramids, it's the construction method is really what we've looked at. And the construction method of that and any other ancient megalithic structure is more or less the same you know, with slight variations in the whole thing. You know, I mean, it involves, literally involves, okay, so when you get to the Egyptian pyramids, for one thing, it's like, they are not tombs. They are not tombs. In all of that mass yeah. of that pyramid, you've got three tiny rooms. Yeah. Three tiny rooms. Then you've got a shaft that was, uh, after the pyramid was built, a shaft that was cut multiple shafts that were cut that were absolutely perfect precision perfectly straight these shafts that were cut um that there are granite stones uh, over 200 granite stones piezoelectric full of piezoelectric charge inside the pyramid that they had to quarry and bring 500 miles when they hadn't invented the wheel yet to um the side of the pyramid and then raise it 200 feet in the air. That's something that engineers today, you know, they trip out over. Like we find it hard to do that, you know, 500 miles. And they actually carved the granite out of what they quarried the granite out of um, copper chisels and stone mallets. Likely not, you know, when you get around the pyramid. Not at all. Yeah. There are saw marks, especially on the, um, outside of the pyramid on the ground, uh, cut into a lot of the stone are saw marks. Literal saws were used um, on some of this. 
So uh, I also, I think that, can you pull that image back up? You were just showing us, Lindsay, this infographic of what's inside the pyramid. I think also, John, one of the things that we should eventually look into is what's actually inside the pyramids. No, not this one, the infographic. Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't believe that this is an accurate illustration of actually what's in there. It doesn't make no, any sense. Think not. about it. I think this is what they're telling us is in there because they don't want us to know. I mean, the fact that in some of our research that we've done, that Sphinx, which was also a prehistory thing that was there before with the pyramids, there is a, a secret shaft underneath the Sphinx that no one wants you to know about either. Right. You know, like Indiana Jones stuff. You know? I think there's a, there, there's a library under there or something. Or something. Thought to be a library. Yeah. Yeah. We've looked, we've looked underneath the Sphinx. There is, there is uh, some type of library or, or some, some location rooms that are full of all this information and likely, I don't know, Atlantean in nature. Some ancient culture. I think that Atlantis was involved in this, like, um, um, but like in, in yeah, the construction of it and like, think about that. Okay. So the Egyptians come to this place and see a gigantic structure like this with water erosion on it. It's been yeah. under the ocean for a really long time. They see the fate, the, the, the headdress, the face, and they start emulating it. Right. Because right. it's the most massive thing they they can see, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, I think. I, I, that, yeah, that's that's definitely the case. I mean, um, if they had even knowledge, like threads of knowledge from the past, where that came from, too, you know, they're connecting into um, the gods of the past here on Earth that were, in a sense fighting over it and manipulating humans, right? These other beings, and then they disappeared and these people are left with, with this, these cultural elements that they're just going to appropriate in general. Um, you know, when we get to, when we get to how the, the pyramids were built and what they're for, those pyramids specifically, like there was an aspect of consciousness in the construction of some of them, um, not all of them. Uh, there, it's like culturally right now, consciousness doesn't mean anything. We're all materialists, not all of us, but we have a very materialist point of view. Uh, 3D reality is the only thing that exists. Consciousness, we don't even know what it is. And so we don't even begin to understand the uses of it from remote viewing to helping lift and move objects. I mean, heck, if you if you listen to any of Dolores Cannon's work, the QHHT practitioner uh, who interviewed tons or put tons of people under, you know, some of these people talk about how they are a different type of being, humanoid, yet amazingly they can move things with their mind, right? Th these are all things that were used with the construction of these sites along with technology. We've even seen that aspect of consciousness in the levitation process that uh, Tibetan monks would do, along with sounds and vibration, to move uh, stones from the ground up onto uh, uh, the sides of cliffs in order to build like little monasteries. So there's this aspect of focused consciousness, but the other side of it is sound frequency, as well as uh, object or uh, um, uh, technology that can like change the matter of an object where it can be molded or shaped. We find this a lot when we get to sort of like the, the Central American pyramids. Um, with Egypt, it's a little, not so much that way, but with Central American pyramids, what we see a lot of is this sort of, and, and, and just like the megalithic structures there, we see a lot of, um, vibrational frequencies that heat up the stone and then it can be shaped. It can be liter literally shaped to where they want it to be. And then we have this levitation aspect as well to put it into place. And that is like a lot of what happened with the pyramids, except there's also this aspect of consciousness that was pulled in in order to 
like directed even more. So I think there were different things going on in different areas as far as, you know, how to build things, how to build these constructions. You're muted, Rob. Sorry about that. You know, I also think that um, people over, they may be over complicating the pyramids a little bit because there's so much that humans don't know about their own history. Like, like you were just talking about, like what technology yeah. they were using in the past, because it's not even remotely possible in their minds that right. humans could have created pyramids back then that existed for as long as they have. And then the Egyptians found them. That's not even possible. It's not even possible. It's not even possible. Yeah. Nor is it possible that that giants existed in the past when there is right. very clear information and data that, that we've all seen that it, it that giants there. actually it's exist. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very clear. You know so, what? You like, know, yeah. It's just the, the pyramids become exponentially less complicated when there right. are giant humans that are, you know, 16 to 22 feet high. Exactly. <laughs> It's like, you know, so true. Yeah. You like you, the, even the carrying of those right stones or whatever becomes much less complicated and different. Right. It's a different type of, I mean, imagine the strength of a being that large, like a human being that large, you're talking about tools that are that large trees were much bigger. Everything was totally different at that time. Right. I mean, and we have evidence of gigantic trees as well, you know, like the, even the trees that existed during the dinosaurs, like the great sequoias that are over in California, some of the remnants of these trees, like dinosaurs walking around amidst those would look like humans walking around under the trees here, you know? Right, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are multiple ways to think about this, but we only think in terms of when this rendition of humans began. And, yeah. and we go from there with this Darwinian theory of evolution. Um, yeah. So so that's the only way we've been trained to think. And everybody will argue the point that it's impossible for it to happen because we started here and we just are going up, 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 you know? So <laughs> you have to get rid of that thought at mm. root and then all of this stuff can be explained, all of it. Yeah, it's it's really true. I think I think you know people's minds aren't even close to being open enough to accept a lot of this stuff. And, and honestly, archaeologists are responsible for a lot of that. And it it's not that okay. There's two things going on. One is I actually think this information is is controlled to some extent. It is okay, yeah. to be fair. And then and then next is the hubris around scientists, archaeologists, and academics is destructive to our understanding of the world around us. Once a theory is accepted and spread in the environment and someone has gained some kind of fame from it, it cannot be changed. Right. I know. I mean, and, and people yeah. were very, very aware of this. I mean, right. um, there's books out there that describe this entire thing. Um, you know, and, and, We've got this this bucket that they put things into called problematica. When something doesn't fit into a specific bucket that they want it to, then they change the story according to that and do not allow for questioning it. Right. Graham Hancock, the heat that Graham Hancock got for producing Ancient Apocalypse was a combination of... of archaeologists and scientists being butt hurt because someone was questioning them, simply questioning them right. when they themselves try to tell people the reason why they trust science is right. because you are supposed to question things and things are supposed to change. Right. And yet here we have a journalist who is not supposed to be as smart as these academics working circles around them and finding and bringing things up that they will, they refuse to accept. Right. Exactly. Just flat out refusal. Yeah. And so how do we, everybody at home, even begin to trust our scientists when they can be controlled so easily by hubris? hubris exactly. By, by fame, by money, by, by whatever agenda is, you know, just... The whatever I mean, it's so many different things, and it's not even it, it, it's complicated, right? 
Because even above, I mean, like, why did some of these organizations pop up? I mean, really, like, why is the Smithsonian doing what Smithsonian does? Why does NASA do what it does? Really, think about it. If, if, if we're, okay, everyone at home, if you were an evil oligarch and you wanted to control people, and, and you were willing to do anything that you could to control people, and you look at it from that perspective, wouldn't the organization you created to control some type of science or industry, the one that seems to be the one telling us about that technology, also be the one that controls the information about it? I mean... And, and, and that's and that and that literally goes right into the pyramid because the pyramid, at least at Giza, is an energy plant. It is an energy generation machine. Yes, that's what it was built for. That's what it's used for. It was not a tomb. All of those chambers in there, and then underneath it, you've got granite and you've got water flowing, creates a massive capacitor, and that is what it was for. It's free energy. They weren't selling it. It was it was something that people utilized to live, to build culture off of it. And that is what these pyramids are mostly used for. And that is the one thing that they want to hide. I mean, reason why Tesla didn't uh, get what his his power across the world, his power yeah. ideas is because they couldn't charge people for it. <laughs> yeah. You just pull it right out of the air. Like there's so much, I gosh, right. dude, there's so many crazy things that I've realized even over the last couple of days, you know, like electricity, I'm pretty sure like frequency actually creates ozone. How okay. Do you mean? Tell me about so that. So if you look at, if you look at devices that people use to create high frequency, so there are some beauty, some beauty, um, like uh, uh, mechanisms, right? Like yeah, 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 yeah. They use it to zap zits or yes. whatever. No, if no. You... Okay, so yeah, I've got one of those things. Yes, it's, but it's a super, super high powered Edgar Casey one, and that thing smells like ozone. Ozone. Yeah, because the freak. So think about this. When we're looking at, this is what's so crazy. Like there, I, I have an ozone machine, okay? And I use the ozone machine to like, you, you know, if, if you have a basement, it'll, it'll eliminate the smell. It right. actually, at a cellular level, it changes the cells and the smell. It's the only thing that can get cigarette smoke out of a car is ozone, right? So I got a high powered ozone machine for my home. You smoke to, it in your basement again? No, no, I'm not. I'd I'm never do that. I have you. never done that. But, <laughs> no, but, but like, if you have a musty smell and like my nose is super sensitive, one of the reasons actually, I just have never been into smoking cannabis is because like my, no my nose, I have probably like one of the most sensitive. No I can smell homes from a street. I can smell the inside yeah. of our home. It's like insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so the, I, I would put the ozone machine on and I smelled one of these devices once and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So it's a certain frequency or electromagnetic resonance that is creating ozone. That's interesting thought. Dude, that yeah. means that the way that the e atmosphere even works and think about the clouds and- Oh man, and See, then, and then going dude, down another rabbit Yes, hole. and then that think about HARP. Like what yeah. harp is actually doing by by blasting frequency up into dude, this whole thing, like that, just seeing all of that, I was like, what right. is going on? You know? Well, you know, I mean, I mean, okay, so when you get into that, that the ionosphere and whatnot, like I had worked with a couple NASA scientists that were, and it was like behind closed doors. It was like disassociated from NASA, it was not official, but but we were working a project where we were looking at climate because they were climate scientists for NASA. And we were helping them with specific projects that, we, that they were working on. A lot of what we saw in our data, as far as climate goes, has to do with particles from space, charging the atmosphere, the ozone, the yes. electricity yes. in the air actually creates the atmosphere Yes. And the ozone that we we saw this remote with remote viewing data, right? We totally saw it with remote viewing data. 
But there's another issue too, when you get to the ionosphere is that if enough energy is pulsed into it, like with HARP, you can create a zero point situation where the whole ionosphere will like collapse and explode, yeah. right? It, it, so yeah. there's a lot of power, a lot of energy in that, tons. And and not just that, but, and we can do a whole couple episodes on this, but what's really interesting is, you know, this the yin and yang situation exists in the ionosphere as well. So if you yeah. pump a lot of high frequency waves into that ionosphere, it emits low frequency waves. And the low frequency waves, if they resonate at a certain resonation, you can create all kinds of fun stuff in the earth, like earthquakes, right. you can create yeah. volcanic, potentially, Okay, create volcanic eruptions. You can find stuff in the earth. You can find gold. You can find water. Uh, you can find all kinds of stuff using low frequency waves that scientists have been using to find things for over 30 years. Right? Right. And uh, some of this stuff is like, and, and then back to the pyramid, when you have the pyramid affecting electromagnetics around a certain area, Right. There are all kinds of things that it's doing that we don't even know about. It's like it could be generating or creating types of oxygen in that area to support cultures that we're not even aware of. The energy, like it's not just energy. Energy actually creates stuff like oxygen. Right. And right. and it's bringing water up, water up like this is like way that technology is so far beyond what people are even prepared for just based off of even our conversation. And it's right. like, I know it's so bizarre that like, it's such a simple structure and no one knows this stuff is going on. I know. I know. I know. How is that? <laughs> because we're all gaslit. We're not given an, people are not given an avenue. Most people exist in the world of, of just eating and going to work you know, seeking pleasure and going to work and culture puts them in that place. Culture doesn't allow for different ideas. In fact, there there's massive attacks these days just on anything that's that's conspiracy related. It is. And so so all of this stuff is relegated to conspiracy theory now, which conspiracy theory was the term coined by the CIA to stop people questioning, you know, the JFK assassination. Well, so, uh, even and before that, to stop questioning before. UFOs. I mean, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so I mean, everybody is responsible for themselves, and everybody is responsible on their own to pull their head out of the sand. Because these days, everything's out there, and it's not that hard to start putting the pieces together to begin to understand it. Hmm. Wow. This has been a couple of really interesting episodes. And actually, this isn't the end of this conversation because I think we're going to need to do some very specific taskings and research on some of these specific pyramids and especially these Chinese pyramids because the yeah. Chinese pyramids are a strange anomaly among pyramids. And, and actually, I think we need to be spending a little bit of time in China because there's a lot of questions I have about the Great Wall as well. I, oh, I don't okay. know if that was entirely just because some emperor wanted to really like It expand. seemed excessive to me. I mean, when they built that thing, I was like, hey, you guys, really, that's a little excessive. It's excessive, but then they're, they're – I – like looking at the Chinese culture, this idea that they were not just kings, that they were emperors sent down from above and 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 it was their duty to build certain things. I mean, even looking at some of the quotes of like Genghis Khan, right? They're terrifying and right. awesome at the same time, you right. know? Yeah. So and like, wh why is this the only structure we can see from space? Like, there's so many things I don't understand oh, man, about the Great Wall. Right, that's weird. That's that is weird. weird. <laughs> and you know oh, what? What was yeah. funny is like when this when this movie, this terrible movie with that Matt Damon came out a couple of years ago that was called like the Great Wall. Yeah. And literally, the Great Wall in the movie, they're saying that the Great Wall was built to keep like de demonic giants out. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it hey. was like. I, I was mean, like, am I, am I watching a bad movie or am I watching some type of like... Or use a soft disclosure. <laughs> strange disclosure, right? <laughs> oh, man. You know.
worst movie Matt Damon's ever been in. Um, but it's very just very funny to consider, you know? Yeah, I got to watch it. Oh, it was awful. I mean, it was like, it was so, it was like a, it was a movie for, for, for a Chinese people, I guess. And they were uh -huh. like, this is when they were really trying to connect Hollywood with, with, china and the economy in china oh i see and, and i think it just it just was terrible i mean there's so many requirements that the chinese government the ccp has for this stuff anyway you know right right yeah anyway um i hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as uh john and i did and uh we have a lot more stuff to do regarding pyramids technology weather china all kinds of things um and gosh yeah we're we're not stopping anytime soon so um it's been really fun john talking to you yeah, about this stuff and, and hanging out um and yeah did you have anything else to add before we um close out this topic no just you know be vigilant and stay curious why well, you got it <laughs> i had to look down again to no, read actually, it <laughs> Lindsay wrote it down <laughs> she did she got it all right. Thanks, All right. Lizzie. Well, you guys, yeah, what John said, be vigilant and stay curious. I, we're going to have to come up with something better than that. Yeah, I know. All right. Later, y'all.